this rooftop RV air conditioner is running on DC power. And notice, I don't have it connected to an RV. I wanted to know, can you run a DC rooftop AC directly from a power station or directly from a lithium battery? And this matters because the air conditioner is the largest continuous power load in an RV, and it usually determines what the rest of your power system has to be. So do you connect the DC air conditioner straight to a lithium battery or straight to a portable power station? That's what we're testing today. I tested both with real power draw, real runtime, and real cost. And once you see the numbers, you'll be surprised at which one is the clear choice. For this test, the air conditioner is completely off-grid, so no RV wiring, no shore power, no generator, and no inverters. The AC is connected directly to the power sources so we can see exactly how much power it draws, with nothing else in between. I'm using a Vlet 2000R 12-volt DC rooftop air conditioner. For power, I'm comparing the Comvolt 4200 portable power station against a Rododo 12.8 volt 300 amp hour lithium battery. The Comvolt is unique because it has a 120 amp Anderson outlet, which is perfect for powering a DC air conditioner. Same air conditioner, same load, same conditions. First, let's look at real world power draw because that's what determines runtime. Startup is smooth because this is an inverter-based DC air conditioner. Once it settles, we're averaging about 515 watts in turbo mode. And that number doesn't change whether I'm using the power station or the lithium battery. The AC draws what it draws, and with a direct DC connection, there's no inverter loss. Runtime comes down to usable energy. The Comvolt has around 4,200 usable watt hours, which works out to roughly eight hours of continuous turbo mode cooling. The 300 amp hour battery holds about 3,840 watt hours or about seven and a half hours of runtime. And that difference lines up exactly with the math because we're avoiding inverter losses. Let's talk about cost. This is where most comparisons go wrong. A standalone lithium battery is definitely the least expensive option by itself, but that isn't realistic because you still need to charge it, protect it, and you'll probably want to power other things. To make this an apples to apples comparison, you have to include everything needed to match the capability of a portable power station, such as a battery charger, inverter, solar charge controller, DC to DC alternator charging, wiring fuses and disconnects, monitoring, and installation. Now, none of these are crazy expensive on their own, but together they add cost, complexity, and require dedicated space. As mentioned previously, one real advantage of the Comvolt is the dedicated 120 amp Anderson port. High current DC outputs like this are rare on power stations, and they make running a DC air conditioner much easier and safer. Beyond that, a lot of the system functionality is already integrated. The inverter, solar charging capability, monitoring, and built-in protections. So you're not just buying energy, you're buying convenience, safety, and versatility. Now, some other considerations you might want to keep in mind. Most power stations have an integrated charger, whereas the Comvolt uses two separate external 500-watt chargers. Also, the inverter is rated at 1800 watts, and the MPPT solar input maxes out at 400 watts. Depending on your setup, both could be something to consider. None of that affects running this DC air conditioner, but it could matter when you're designing a full RV power system. So here's the real takeaway. If you already have a solid off-grid system installed, Connecting the AC to that system is probably the most cost-effective option, and adding another battery simply extends your time off-grid. But if you're building from scratch or just adding DC air conditioning, a good portable power station can be a simple all-in-one solution, especially if you can connect the air conditioner directly to DC power and avoid inverter losses. 
Regular viewers know I personally use the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 as my onboard lithium system because I have a 120 volt AC and it was easy to install, but I do have inverter losses. So if this helps you understand how your air conditioning power choice shapes the rest of your RV power system, hit the like button. It really helps the channel. Links are below. And if you want more real world testing without the hype, make sure you're subscribed. Thank you so much for watching.